One plane would take off, fly all the way to Kesco. Radio went back and told to tell them it was clear or it wasn't clear. That's what I got caught on my two hours out and nine hours back flight I made one time. And we got up down between cloud layers, flew through two hours. I asked the pilot, I said, let's go down and look at the ocean. He says, why? I said, well, if I can see the ocean, I can tell where wind's from. So we come out from under clouds, and I saw the ocean, and I said, let's turn 180 degrees. He says, why? I says, well, we better be heading back home. I said, I don't know where we are. <laughs> I can't see any land. And I says, they got a hundred and some odd miles an hour wind. You know, these things are only flying 135 miles an hour towards the same gas. That's a B-17. And so <clears throat> he was good. He, he actually turned around and we started back. We flew, well, we got down on the water at that time because I realized the wind was too strong up where we were because we were at 20 some thousand feet at the time. Yeah. And so, so we got back on the water. Immediately, uh, oh, I actually flew about a half an hour, I could see Kiska. <laughs> Kiska was 500 some miles where we took off. <laughs> and we were making 15 miles an hour <laughs> at the time. And we had all that distance to get back, so I, we, we got on the east side of the highlands and managed to work our way back, thinking we'd never make it. But the wind slowly died down, we were able to pull in on the or the southwestern part of the island, which had just put in a new field and land the plane, walk away from it, come back the next day, looked at it, rivets all popped in it, the gas was all gone, there was no gas in it. How we got down, I don't know.